If you've been watching this week, you'll know that our health correspondent, Jill Dummigan, has been reporting from inside the Royal Blackburn Hospital. Today, she assesses COVID's impact on non-urgent surgery. On the C11 COVID ward, it's Debbie Wilcox's first day back after two and a half weeks off with the virus. Just generally exhausted. Just felt rough, felt awful. And now you're back. Do you not find that a bit tough? Because, you know, it's hot here, you've got a mask on. Yeah, but you've, you've just got to come back, don't you, and, uh, and, and get on with it, you know. A lot of the staff have been off with, uh, you know, the same symptoms, with COVID symptoms. Unlike the first wave, which happened in a full lockdown, staff and their families are now more exposed to the virus outside the hospital, with inevitable results. There's more people out and about, people are going to do the shopping, it's everywhere. Um, so I have got staff that are now contracting COVID, um, so they ring in at the last minute or I get um, an email from Occupational Health and say such body's now got to self-isolate. The hospital has to prioritise critical care, so staff from other units are transferred over for a month at a time. Debs Cooper's stint started three days ago. Tired, emotional, I'm not going to have... I've cried numerous times um, and I'm tight I'm exhausted I'm not sleeping and why are you not sleeping what is it that's I think just the anxiety of it all because uh, you don't know what you're coming into every day many staff are also being pulled over from the trust's other hospital in Burnley which specializes in elective surgery we're having to support and help ICU at Blackburn but we're also having to send theatre staff over to Blackburn for the mayor major cancer and emergency work. In the first wave, the NHS cancelled all elective surgery. Since then, staff have worked hard to get through the backlog. Through the summer, the beds here have been full, but in the past few weeks, the high numbers of patients with COVID in Blackburn means that things here have had to change. Operations are still going ahead this time, but with reduced staff, many are having to be postponed. I think the challenge is it's an ever-changing picture, whereas you can't really plan more than a week in advance because you don't know your staffing levels. To try to reduce the impact on patients, many staff are working extra shifts. I'm doing probably three or four extra nights of on-call this month, as well as my own on-call, and I'll probably do perhaps two or three operating lists extra, and I'm not unusual. All my colleagues are doing the same thing across all the specialties. Someone whose operation is going ahead today is Kira Carlin, who developed gallstones after giving birth here in the spring. The pain, I can't even explain the pain to anybody. My biggest worry was it's not going to get done this year and I'm going to have to live with gallstones and this pain. And I was just so scared, but I'm, I mean, I'm here now, aren't I? So. I'm just going to check your temperature. It's important that this hospital stays COVID free, so anyone coming into it, including us, has to get a COVID test and a check on the door. All the patients who are coming in for surgery today, they queue up at the door, we bring them in, take the details, ask them if they've had isolated since the COVID swab and just go through this checklist. For minor operations, that isolation period's now just three days. The rising infection levels have seen some patients cancelling, but many others are just glad to get the treatment. I came yesterday and, and I had operation and I'm really happy. I'm fine. And were you worried about coming in here at all? No, no, no. Well, uh, it's my town. I live in Burnley. <laughs> well, I, I don't mind in Blackburn, but I mean, like Burnley girl. <laughs> Outside, all thoughts are on a possible vaccine, plans for Christmas. In here, it's about what happens in January. When you look to the immediate future, how do you feel about it? Tired. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm optimistic that we're going to keep people safe for, for that length of time. Hopefully we'll have the vaccine soon, so that will help issues, but just need everybody to try and be sensible. I can't predict it's going to get any better at the minute. I think we're all feeling apprehensive because we know that and I'm not sure how that's going to play out. Jill Dummigan, BBC Northwest Tonight, East Lancashire.